Welcome in everyone, Lisa Matthews here with the State for Day podcast, and we are joined by a very good friend, longtime friend, yeah. a Chandler native, uh, Arizona quarterback for quite some time, um, just a Valley guy here, and I'm so excited to catch up with you. Before you head off to Spain, I found out. There we go. We are, he's leaving the U.S. of A, yes. but Brett Hunley's here, y'all. Thank so. you. Thank you for having me. We love you being here in Chandler. <laughs> you know, you're just... You're a guy. It's crazy, too. You like, represent. That's what I'm saying. It's like time goes so fast, and now 30 years deep, and we're here. I Look know. We were talking. So we met, um, although we we're both from the Valley, but at the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. And you came in in 2019 and 2020 and had some great years there. And just all your experiences through the NFL, too, which we will touch on for sure. But he's just more than football, yes. you guys. He's probably the most interesting human being <laughs> like you and larry i just sit here and I, I listen to stories from you know these years past i'm like how do they do so much i'm on a country hunt with larry yeah. i got I'm, I'm chasing him right now i know you guys are like competitors yeah, in that yeah, how yeah, many just, countries i'm i'm because i haven't been able to now later this year i'm about to catch him really but larry's uh-huh. i think at like 100 and something well, he's like retired that's like that's now. what i'm saying You're i'm at like 40 yeah i'm at like 44 i think right now so oh i God. but once i leave it's a wrap i'm about to catch him okay yeah. do you guys like text each other like 45. Once I get to once I get to 80, I'm going to shoot him another message and say, just okay. just want you in the back of your head. Just just know it. I'm coming. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so before we dive into all the things, we play a little game here just to kick things off. Okay. Put you on the spot a little bit. Like First it. answer that comes to mind is called fill in the blank, okay? I like it. Are you ready? Yeah, no, I'm not. Fine. You're nervous. He's ner- <laughs> he's twitching. Okay. <laughs> You've been you've been in more intense situations. Okay, question number one: favorite childhood movie. Man, um, I would have to say favorite childhood movie is Finding Nemo. No way! Yeah, that's I a good one. I was not expecting that. That's okay. a good one. I, I'm a huge fan of Finding or Lion King. One oh, of the two. Yeah, that hits. Yeah, but Finding Nemo is a good, great like all around movie. Okay. Yeah. Just is there like a deep meaning there? Or you just no, I like Dory. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like Dory these days. She's I forget so everything. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Scappy. <laughs> yeah, we have Scappy. <laughs> what about Nemo two? No, I didn't watch. Okay. It. You try to do too much. Too when you much. get into the, you just stick with Nemo and find a Nemo. Okay. Yeah. I'm like trying to think. We're not too far even... behind in ages. Like there's was that a your, two. That was like your real no, childhood. No, it's Finding Dory. <gasps> finding Dory is the second one. Dory. If you love Dory, you got to see I Finding Dory. It's like a. Didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, Finding Dory. It's like a. Yeah, I had no idea. It's well, like a three story. Kids the story in, of the yeah, <laughs> Dory. <laughs> yeah. No idea. I did. got it all ready to go. Okay, so you have to homework after this. Finding Dory. Finding Dory. I have to find Dory. You have to find her. All right. Oh, this one's a good one. Okay. Best, put us on, best Chandler food spot. It'd have to be Cho Dang. Cho Dang? Cho Dang. Isn't no. that that, uh, like, restaurant? Like, it's like we get the teriyaki bowl. Okay. It's not, it's not Elmer's. It located? So it's like, if Give you're looking at Elmer's, you go oh. left, and then you walk down, and then it's, and it might not be there no more, but it's on your right. I want to go looking. And it's, it was like this hole in the wall food, like teriyaki spot I used to go to all the time. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that sounds yummy. Yeah, I want to say it's children. I hope Uh-oh. it is, I guess. We don't know Mers. I'm currently Big unfamiliar. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I want to say it's called Chandler Children. High. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I want to say, hey, but... I, if I was looking at Elmer's, I probably went to Elmer's. I don't think yeah. I was turning left. Yeah, it was left else. and you got to go down. And, yeah. then and like it was, a creepy house. Yeah, I was like... Okay. <laughs> I used to go there all It's probably delicious. Yeah, I used to go there. If it's still there, I will go check it out. You're like, it's been some time. I would say Little Caesars, but that one's... I mean, no, no. Chandler is like very old. Uh, listen, I don't think you understand how close Chandler High is to these two establishments. Yes. No, I do know. Yes. I, I, just because like, I'm a Phoenix girl, yes. DVHS, yeah. I do know. Listen, you're out of your spot. class and you're full pizza in hand in six minutes the, the, if you're quick enough. And you buy the ranch and you... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, did you guys have off-campus? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's because why. Chandler is the best. Yes, absolutely. DV, no. Right. DV, no others. No. Honestly, no other that's why you were, DV, yeah. school was. You didn't know that? Oh, no, I didn't. Come on. No, I didn't. Oh. Wow, no. Come on. Yeah, Chandler right. High School is... I can't beat it. Okay, we're going to get into a fight here. All right, <laughs> back in the old days. It literally feels like the old days. <laughs> um, this is a good one. Nostalgia here. Favorite NFL memory that you've experienced? Man, you know, actually, my favorite NFL experience was when um, we were playing Seattle in Maybe. Seattle for for Arizona. <laughs> And um, it was the cultivation of, like, a lot of things for me in my NFL career mm-hmm. to be able to get back in, to play, and in a sense, 
show that I could still play. Yeah. And uh, we won the game, you know, after I got the game ball, and it was just an emotional roller coaster. But it was, like, one of my favorite. And after the game, that was the game that Russell had broke the franchise record for passing yards for Seattle. And I just came from Seattle the year before. He gave me his jersey and signed it for me. Oh, wow. Still happens to this day. I knew you were going to say yeah. that. That's probably one of my favorite memories. Yeah. I remember how emotional, too, that was yeah. in the locker room. And it was just, awesome. That's a that's a big high. Yeah. Everybody Any was time around. Cardinals are beating Seattle, I think it that's should be I'm an emotional saying. time. Yeah. In my but he had even more emotional times. Yeah. 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 Coming huge. from Seattle and then yeah. being able to, yeah, anytime you win in Seattle like yeah. that. Yeah. Just, and, yeah, that was, that was mm. great. Yeah. It was awesome. Okay. If I didn't play football, I would have been a... So answering this... As a child, I would have been a firefighter. No way! Absolutely, okay. yeah. My, I grew up around uh, the Phoenix Fire Department. My uncle, um, Big Rich, as I call him, uh, Richard Winston. Uncle. Okay. Um, he was the captain, fire captain. So I used to be like, I, me and um, his son, Little Rich, we used to have like our little fire gear, and we'd sleep at the station and like go to and pull, put out the fires. I love that. So I would have absolutely been a okay. firefighter. We're a fire fam. My mm. husband's with Tempe. Oh, see, there we go. Fire. Yeah. Um, those 24 hour shifts though, yeah, I'm so, like, yeah, so, yeah. get home, yeah. stop saving <laughs> lives. My life, <laughs> he's a saving over Lisa here with his kids. What, Nick? Let him save lives, <laughs> please. <laughs> okay, to be real, yeah, it, it's to be real, maybe half the calls, yeah. It's not. Yeah. Listen, Julie's a it's midwife. It's not all like leaves. firefighters. Like, no, you're thinking. Seen, I was yeah. like, you're not going to go into a burning fire. Like, no. no I get not. you. Julie leaves for 24 yeah. to 36 hours Just for wait birth. Just have that baby. Okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> Just wait till you're on night shift. Like, true night shift. <laughs> she wants to take the baby with her. Three okay kids, with it. Yeah. Yes. But we love the fire service. Yeah. And, you know, it's a great job. It's great. We love Tempe Fire. Okay. Shout out Tempe. I'm going to have to see if my husband knows. Your Richard people. Winston, yeah. He's that is an official now. name. Yeah, Richard. Richard Winston. Did your cousin become a firefighter? Yeah, no, he's actually in the Phoenix uh, Police Department. Look I that. mean, Fire Department. Look at that. Yeah. I love it. Love okay. It. Next question. Okay, well, what about now? Since now? You're not, yeah, let's answer like present. Yeah, now, Brent. if I didn't play football, I would, um, well, now that I don't, yeah. technically, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, real estate and uh, and traveling, I think, are the things. Real estate, I guess I would leave it at that because that's where I would make my money. And I'm like, where yeah. we make it, we would spend the money yeah, traveling. <laughs> yeah, the, the real estate is where okay. I would hone in and say that's what I would do now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we'll we got a good it. group of guys, too. Actually, all Chandler and yeah. Arizona guys, Devin Kennard, Marcus Wheaton, mm-hmm. Jamar Taylor now. just So now That's we're right. all pretty heavily connected in the real estate group out here. Football and finances. There You're going to have go. to listen to Devon's episode here. It was really good. Oh, He's always, know. like, spin He's some good. Yeah. money talks and all the things. I'm like, damn. Yeah, Devin's good. Okay. Next question. Something most people don't know about me. Uh I have a, well, I mean, people probably know this because I put it out there all the time, but I, I have a huge, I have a huge passion for traveling and cooking. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, those are two passions of mine that I have just grew up with and, and photography. That's probably something that people don't know. Such a great photographer. Yeah. I yeah. love photography. Have you seen his IG page? Check it out while you're back I have there. not. I yeah. will do. Listeners, check it out. Pull it up. Give them the IG. Brett Hunley 7. Check it out, please. Yeah. You got to scroll a little bit because I haven't done too much photography yeah. lately. I remember during like COVID. Yeah. yeah. When like, I travel, I do a lot of photography. When I'm in Arizona, there's not, there's not much. Did you do it at Chandler High at all? No, I didn't. I didn't pick up really the camera until I got out um, my first year in the league when I started traveling, and then I started doing a lot of like traveling photography and like mm-hmm. ventures. But like when I would be in Arizona, I'd look at it. I love Arizona, but I ain't much to take photos of out here. So Are you I, kidding? No, Do you no, go to I the disagree. Ma- I disagree. No, no, we no. Are... other than sunsets, maybe. Hey, other show than you beautiful sunsets. sunsets. I'll show you a whole catalog of saguaros in uh, great see, I don't desert. Want to take pictures of saguaros. He wants but to be. Take... No, this guy wants to be <laughs> yeah. hanging upside down yeah. from the freaking yeah, yeah, I, Eiffel I want to be Tower. Doing, yeah, like I want to go bungee jumping. I want to do all that stuff. That's the type of photography I like. I see you. I see you at the top of the Grand Canyon. Have you been into the Grand? canyon no have so not done that yeah okay you want, fact. you want to feel real small about who yeah. you are as a human being 
Go down two miles into the Grand Canyon. You don't yeah. have to go to the bottom. Just go two miles. You'll start to realize how tiny you are. You haven't done you the waterfalls or anything like that? See, you, you guys over here saying, I don't want to no, take pictures. We got teal blue water, water. Know, that's <laughs> literally incredible. It, you guys would be so, like, disappointed in me, too. I, I am like, disappointed. I know. I have been to every, it, we'll get more on this traveling stuff. I've been to every world wonder, and the last one I went to was the Grand Canyon. Wow. Like the, uh, we have you here on the State Forty Eight podcast, like, and you're over saying. here now. <laughs> Brett, let me know when you want to go hike the canyon. I will go okay, with you before you over leave there. to Spain it's and right over the world. Oh lord, I, we're having a baby in three months. If you want to go before that, before let that. me know. We're not having a baby. Yeah, He's no. having. I'm a baby. having a baby. <laughs> I am done, and we are. I'm gonna do all the things. I'm gonna travel. Stay uh, 48 having a baby. Yeah, stay 48 having a baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last question. See how we go on tangents here. Um, my favorite hobby is you said cooking, traveling, something, something new. Uh, favorite hobby. I feel like it's got. I sort of have to stick to. Oh, what else do I like doing? Um, you like shopping? I'm like picking for see, you. No, I know. That's what I'm like. Fashion. No, no, my lady be shopping. Cause I don't be shopping. I, to be she honest, she picked this out. She for sure picked. No, actually, I, I picked this out. Okay. You know, say I'm gonna give, give myself some credit today. You know, yeah. but most of the time, yeah, I'm not. I'm not the biggest shopper. Um, yeah, if you take me to the mall, I'm probably want to leave in like 20 minutes. Yeah, you're um, shopping. Um, but but you like fashion. You're always like. So you used know, to always come to games like dress, and it was so. I got to give a shout out to Troy Hurley, who was the guy who went to Chandler High School, and oh, wow. he was the guy who would help me do all the fashion stuff. Me personally, I don't really have the greatest fashion mind, but like wow. the people, Troy but and you just need Kadeja, get people. So I just need it. people. That's Is it. that what you're saying? That's I need it. Really... You just got to get the right people, <laughs> okay. and then. You know, because everybody thought I was picking all this. Absolutely. Yeah, not. you would. Okay, was there anything that you're like? Because you would come. And I would. Some... I would have a clear like. I don't want this, or I don't like this look. But like, give me that. There's some you know, guys. Russell I'm sorry. Wilson, Cam Newton type style, and let's roll. But Cam gets crazy sometimes. That's yeah. It's a little bit outside my. Because there's some yeah. guys that would walk up. You know, like it became a thing. You know, now it's a big thing. It's, it, yes. And the NFL, they just posted some on the NFL. I was like, wow, look at it. It's so much pressure. Like, yes. if I was a football player about to play a big game, just I'm coming in like sweats. You know what's funny too? It's like on. you you Don't wear all of it <laughs> just to walk from the bus That's what I'm to saying. the locker room. All of that just for no, and then what what also kills me is people like you wear a nice outfit to walk from your car to the plane, but just for the photo. Just wow. for the I mean, how much are Let's we dig deeper into I don't, that. How much are we talking for some of these outfits? Because like, oh. I'm sure some of these outfits for some of these players, whether it's football, it's a big thing in basketball too, right? Yeah, is that it's like, we're talking about like 20k thousands for thousands an for a eight walk minute up. Yes. an eight minute walk, if that. Not even eight minutes. Not even. Maybe Not four. Even. Maybe just a four. Quick four. Yeah, that's just because you're waiting on and the bus half the time. And you have to make sure yeah. your camera guy is there you have to, to get it. So for then the you gram. have to slow down and make because you know everybody gets off the bus at the same time. You have to slow down. So like if somebody's in front, you got to give them space. Yeah. There's, there's like men. There's men <laughs> literally <laughs> standing there waiting. Yes. Oh yeah. We would Absolutely. have we would have production meetings for yes. like what time is our photographer have to be there to yep. make sure that we get the intro, we get Kyler coming in, we get all the guys. You know. Yeah. It was like a. It's a thing. It's an actual. I mean, it makes thing. sense. I get it. And it's now like we a have runway. like the slow mo cam. Yes. People go live now. It's. Wow. It's, a, it's a it's a real thing now. So let's so. dig deeper into that. Yeah, just How much my two cents. So the question <laughs> was just two, my the, two cents. The that. question was, what are your other hobbies? In fashion, yeah, I know. We, we get into shopping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, really, cooking, traveling, and those are my biggest. Like cooking, probably is just my best hobby. Mm -hmm. Like I I love to cook. I, mean, I remember you telling me that, like during COVID, when mm -hmm. everything was shut down, we caught up, and you're like, I've just been. Cooking, cooking everything. I'm Men like, who cook. Whoa. Yeah, that's important. That was that was a that was a that was a, a segment I had going for a while with Kenyon Drake. Mm -hmm. He was on it. Had uh, a couple other guys, and that was a big thing. So just that's cooking fun. is is the way to go for me. Oh my god! You have a specialty? Yeah. <sighs> Man, that's always a hard one because, like, okay. I would say like soul food. You know what I'm saying? Like the stuff I grew up on, but at the same time, like. You give me some Italian food, like I'll throw down on oh. some Italian. Like I really like some chicken parm, some good stuff like that. You know, nice. a little bit of everything. Yeah, okay. I like taking recipes from different countries and try. And I couldn't like give specific names because it's like name. I probably can't. I don't want to butcher it, but like, <laughs> the, it's yeah. It's just the recipes are like so different, and uh, it's just that's what that's another reason why I want to travel. Build Learn. this cookbook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. There's so much good food out there. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, the best of the best. Absolutely. Ugh. Well, just knowing you from the time that I have, it's like you are such a multi-passionate person. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, there's football, the staple, 
but you have so many other passions and desires for life yeah. and so many different facets of who you are. So I know you just put in your retirement. So congratulations. Thank you. This it's new crazy. era. It's a new chapter. Yeah. It's crazy. It is wild. Like, um, it's hard to explain too, cause I was just talking about it and it's, uh, Nobody talks about life after football, you know, and that's that's the thing that it's it's a hard transition for anybody, but it's it's beautiful, yeah. beautiful. If you embrace it, yes. in that way. Yeah. Did you have any like moments where it felt really hard to make come to that decision, and what did that look like? Yeah, I, I think the hardest part for any athlete in general, because it's sort of like all we did and all we knew, and um, to that next step of life is just such an unknown that. It's a hard decision to make. And it, most of them, we don't get to make the decision. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just don't get another contract. And then you're sort of sitting around trying to twiddle your thumbs and think of like, okay, where do I go next? Um, and for me, I think I've had a very smooth transition out to where, you know, when I was at Arizona for the two years, then went to uh, Indianapolis and Baltimore and then finished up uh, there. But I, I knew my ending was coming and I, I had always said I wanted to make it to eight to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't get everything I wanted out of the game, then there's something maybe that's not as healthy of an attachment to the game. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was like, if I can give eight to 10 years of my life to this, I can walk away on my own terms. And I, I completely feel satisfied. So I'm good at this point. But, like, I think it's a hard decision for most. Well, I think, yeah, we've both seen a lot of players where, yeah, football is life and you have to dedicate so much time and yeah. your identity tied to it to get to that elite level. But something with you is you've always been passionate about other things. Yeah. So to come to those terms, it's not like, hey, what do I do now? It's like it feels like and what I sense from you, it's like, well, what direction yes. do I go? And because you have so many other passions in life. Yeah, that it's actually been interesting. I feel like I'm more t busy now yeah. than, than I am with football. I mean, you go to freaking practice and meetings, but now I'm like, man, I, I feel like I got less free time now because I'm trying to do everything I always wanted to do, yeah. <laughs> to do outside of football. But it, it is a beautiful thing to be able to, like, flourish in one thing and then now jump to something else. And, and I think you hit it on the head. It's the perspective of, like, going to that new thing where a lot of players get scared because man when i saw 30 for 30 broke i don't know if anybody oh, here has seen it yes. scared the living daylights out of me i was like well one i'm against the odds to start off two you know i i, I want a successful marriage relationship stuff and it's like everything that players go through when they leave it just goes to crap and i was like i don't want none of that so wow. i think it's just the perspective change and embracing the jump yeah. Okay, so you mentioned this new chapter, this new life. Mm. What does it look like now? The moment you said, okay, football is behind me, mm. what was the first thing that you ran towards? Um, you know, honestly, like I said, I had a very smooth transition through. Th actually, let me not use the word smooth. <laughs> Nothing close to smooth. But it ever I, yeah, but I had time, I guess, mm. to figure out. So, like, when I was done, I wasn't in the space of, like, what do I do with my time? I was in the space of like, how do I pretty much get more time to myself? You know, I thought I was going to have free time. I didn't. <laughs> and, um, and so for me, once I transitioned out by that time, I had my foundation going, um, which was doing really, really well and growing and still growing. And I'm learning a bunch of things, um, even in that. So that was taking up a portion of my time to the real estate side. So I do developments out here, building houses and flips. And then I also have a management company. Um, so that was taking up a lot of more of my time. And then um, I actually never in a million years, I know we're doing this podcast, never in a million years took a class on broadcasting, knew what. I saw something in you. No, nothing <laughs> ever. Yeah. And um, I got a call from CBS and they, they had actually reached out the year before, but that's when I went back to Baltimore mm -hmm. and uh, they had asked if I just wanted to try a show. And I was like, sure, I'll talk some football. And uh, <laughs> still remember the first time when I got there, it was a Monday night quarterback. And it was like me, Jake Cutler, um, Adam Shine, all these guys, and they have all their notes and all this. And I was just like looking up YouTube clips to try to figure out what to talk about. Yeah. And it's like you, you're you going into this world and you have no idea what to do and how everything is practiced. And mm -hmm. it's been a fun, fun. I actually just got back from New York two days ago and filmed the last uh, Monday Night Quarterback segment with CBS of this year. So it's been a blur. But now outside of uh, football, 
I think just having the broadcasting, the real estate, the foundation, um, and then even the travels, um, I think have just been trying to figure out how to like just bring it all together. I mean, how? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm surprised we even got you in this room yeah. because I remember messaging you and you're like, well, I'll be here yes. sometime, I think this, uh, like January. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, what a ride. That's yeah. insane. It's been a lot. So tell me about, let's let's backtrack a little bit, the foundation side. Yeah. What are you learning? Um, what is the mission behind the foundation? Yep. Just sharing with the audience and how can we support? Absolutely. Um, so in Man, the foundation has been just like a passion project of mine and something I never would have thought of grown to what it has now. But uh, when uh, we were younger, me and my sister, uh, she was diagnosed with epilepsy and um, we had um, sort of grown up out here. There wasn't a big community of epilepsy at all. Um, so her story was never told. She never really felt heard. And um, as I went to UCLA, played there and then, you know, I randomly said something to a reporter. It got out. And then uh, we got uh, working with the National Epilepsy Foundation and uh, really became acquainted. My sister finally felt like she had a, a community to wow. talk to and about the things that she was going through, even as a brother or significant other, you know, not significant other, but like um, as sibling, a, yeah. a sibling, yeah. yeah. Um, just in our experiences, watching somebody you love, um, you know, go through those things, I had a community to bounce ideas off of. And um, that's really the basis of why we started the foundation, uh, the Hunley Foundation. And uh, it's really just benefiting children and families in needs. And we kept it broad for the reason of not being specific to epilepsy, but also being able to, uh, you know, give back. We do, um, we have a first time father program with Eisner and it's free to all fathers, first time fathers, they can come and join. And it's a 12 week course where they go through everything from there we go yeah there we there we go write that down baby that yeah. Out. yeah yeah and it's 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 it like programs like that even uh, during covid being able to go to phoenix children's hospital and give meals to every all the employees of the mm-hmm. hospital just mm-hmm. stuff like that it a lot that's why our mission was broad because we felt like we didn't want to stick just to epilepsy now we do a lot with epilepsy but it allows us to just give back where we see a need um and so that's it's been the biggest blessing to myself to paris because now there is that sense of community and we're meeting others who were going through the same things that Paris was going through that now they can reach out to us and we can get them connected. We can share stories with them and they all feel heard. And um, now we're, we've grown to shoot. We have uh, the poker run coming up in Arizona. Rick Harrison of the Pawn Stars uh, is a big part of the foundation. He started hosting events for us uh, and we've been rocking with him for a couple of years now. Uh, but yeah, the foundation has really grown from just, again, something that I had no idea about. And, um, and it just kept growing into giving back, benefiting others. And now it's to the point where we got full staffs. We got, wow. oh man, it's a lot. So That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's what's, been a huge thing. What's crazy is I do remember briefly you telling that story of your sister. I thought it was strokes. Yeah, yeah. But my son just got diagnosed in last year. Yeah, last No March. way. Yeah. I, I literally have chills as you're saying. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I what? had no idea. Yeah, all that because was... of epilepsy. Wow. And, wow. And it's great because I yeah. randomly talk to people, and they're like, and I, I forgot who I was just talking to, um, but one of their uh, children that got diagnosed, and it's the same. You get diagnosed, and you have no, no idea. idea. <laughs> no I idea. I can't even tell. Like you were saying, I was like, yes, yeah. I don't. Yes. Yes, it's and so... even and so that community, that sense, of, like, because when we were growing up, Boy, I mean, luckily, you know, maybe there's social media. There was none of this yeah. back then. And so, yeah. you know, even the things of having to deal with people, you know, when you start the medicine for epilepsy, mm-hmm. complete game changer. Like my sister had to stop track um, and just even the bullying and stuff that kids just don't know any different when they see somebody having a seizure. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that type of help for people who are going through it, for the moms, the fathers, that's oh the gosh. community we want to build. Love yeah, that. Well, cool. tell me yeah. well, I after this we're Absolutely. gonna have to connect because what, I definitely whatever you need feel the need for. But even doctors, yeah. boy, yeah. figuring out all that stuff is a lot. So yeah. I'm telling you, yeah, this is that's why we started the foundation just wow. to help with people in those situations. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's crazy. I'm just a little, I'm a little <laughs> shook right now. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. I know it yeah. really is, and it, it it was such a pivotal point of you know not, and that's great that you have something in place like this. Um, if you don't mind me asking, was it like grandma seizures or was it uh, what type of? No, thank God. Okay. It was um, focal. Yeah. was the first Well, the f- first one was 
he like it, they thought he just like passed out yeah. um playing and just turned white and pale like all the things and they called me and they're like your son just had a seizure and i was like uh wrong child <laughs> i mean nothing like yep. never anything so that was really weird and then he had a second seizure before he got on his medication yep. and there's so much behind that too of like trying to figure out medication the best way and then you medication as a child is completely different so than medication different. as an, it's Where crazy it's a year in all, yeah almost a year in um march and it's just i yeah a lot of new things and information so what a blessing to be able to absolutely to we'll whatever you need more and absolutely. we'll make sure that we support you absolutely and any yeah. way that stay for day too can like get in we do this we love to do this in the community we know that your heart is always in the community yeah. so any way that we can help too, i appreciate that let us know going forward because it's not going anywhere no, it's not and i always remember you like all the cardinals events you were at every charity event yeah. like everything where did that stem from growing up Man, I, I, the way I was raised was you just give back, and it's yeah. it's and it's nothing that like when I give I don't expect anything. Like I, I feel like because we were in those positions where you don't have anybody, like and that's the people I'm really trying to connect yeah. with and reach. And so a lot of people too, and especially in this world, I would say a lot of people give and expect and want some. Mm-hmm. It's there's something attached to it. The foundation, what I do, the reason I go to these events. I would, I'm fairly, I would easily say I am blessed and I am lucky to be in the position I am. And I would say luck is a big part of it. But in that, I've always felt the need that there are other people who might not be as lucky as me in these positions. So like if, if there's anything I can do, if there's a foundation I can create to bridge that gap with others in just yeah. these small different ways, if I can go to events, like it was always great connecting with people who are in, you know, maybe not the favorable p- position and uh, just being able to help however I could. Yeah. And I know you've obviously been with a part of different organizations, different yeah. teams and stuff, but, you know, having you here in the Valley during those couple of years, knowing that like you were boots on the ground for yeah. what you love, even though you don't go to the Grand Canyon and <laughs> take pictures of our swirls. <laughs> don't like the swirls. But he's not about the swirls, people. But just having you at home, like yeah. that was a very special like era. And it was yeah. a, a few guys too. Yeah. Like we had a run In the locker room, it was yeah. me, Prince Mukamara, who's my locker yes. mate. The reason I got into real estate because of Prince. No way. And Devin. That was the whole, you know, okay. we can get to that story because yeah. that was the whole reason I even got into real estate. That's next. And um, so Prince Mukamara, Byron Murphy, yeah, Byron. Devin Kennard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terrell Suggs. Yep. We had a whole locker room of guys who were all oh, Chandler. Gosh, yeah, Arizona, it was awesome. I love yeah. that. That was a special, that Arizona two years was such a special time it for was. me. Yeah. It really was. Now it was awesome. sound old like that. Was I know. Oh, that it's era. so fast. Yeah. <laughs> that era. It was so now, fast. Unfortunately, Terrell out. Suggs was a Hamilton guy. Yeah, he yes, was. He was. <laughs> I, well, he was a Chandler, Chandler first, and then he moved. Oh, is that what happened? He was, he was Chandler ASU first. Guy. I mean, that means that he moved because he knew yeah. that Hamilton was going to win and Chandler yeah. won. Yeah, yeah, see? <laughs> he was an ASU guy, unlike this guy over here. He had to go out of states, whatever. <laughs> ASU, you know what's funny? ASU had Coach Noel, Noel Mazzoni, and I always give him Noel crap for this. Mazzoni. Noel Mazzoni was the offensive coordinator. And I took a visit to ASU. What if that fits so well? They didn't even give me an offer okay. before all these other schools. And I was like, I'm 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 one of you guys. Yeah. And Norma Zoni ended up when I went to UCLA, uh Rick That's Neuheisel right. got fired. Yep. Coach Moore became the head coach. Norm Mazzoni became the offensive coordinator for UCLA. Yep. And then we became best of friends. Yeah. And you're like, see, and this I, is why you need to be And back. I still was, I still talk to this guy every day. We get lunch and everything. Man, Noel was awesome. I yeah. love that. Oh, the recruiting life. Yeah. You know, it's oh, man. Yeah. That's another <laughs> podcast. Yes, for sure. Yeah, that's a whole for different story. Day. Yeah. Uh, so you're talking about trying to merge all these passions together. How did then insert real estate become of your life? Yeah, that <laughs> man, that one came out of the blue too. I always had a passion for real estate and maybe building and stuff, but I never knew what it was. Like everybody was talking about long term, Devin Kennard and stuff, yeah. but out in Arizona, like th- this isn't necessarily a market for cash flowing. This is an appreciation market. So like when I was running these numbers, I was like, man, I'm not putting my money in this to only see like mm. 200 bucks a month in return. Like right. ain't gonna happen. And uh, random enough, Prince Mukamara was my locker mate, and he was like, "Hey, have you ever looked at short-term rentals?" And, and I, just a random yeah, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> just talk about real Tuesday estate. After, yeah. Was, yeah, like right after practice, like, and that's right. how it started. Literally after practice, and he heard me talking about some properties, and he was like, "Dude, you ever looked at short terms?" And I was like, "No." And he started telling me how he got into it, 
And sure enough, we started sitting down after every practice and he just opened up his books to me. He showed me everything that he was doing, like what, and it was, it was nothing he wanted. He was just like, if you're interested, I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing. And he was building and doing these short-term rentals and I, and he was making some great money. And I was like, wow, this is something that I could do and still, you know, offset my NFL income. And, uh, and so I bought my first property five minutes away from his property. And I was like, screw it. I'm if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna buy it. And then, um, Bought another one in the area, and they both did really, really well. Um, and then after that, you know, I was like, well, somebody has to manage them. And, yeah, that part. <laughs> and you got to trust somebody to manage them. And I was like, you know what? Like, I, I can start a management company and manage these. And so I talked to some friends and, and then started the management company and then, you know, started managing a lot of uh, players' properties and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And that's literally how all this real estate stuff even started. So it started with Prince and then I bought and now I have three short term rentals. Then I also started building and developing on the side, which came as a um, another connection I had. And um, that actually started really picking up steam. So everything has just been growing from that one conversation and then larry was a big part too because larry is yeah, big in the yeah he's <laughs> huge so i would talk to him and that's that's really how all this from arizona in the locker room that's how wow. all this real estate started so did you get your license or do you just no buy? Okay. just i'm just the investor you're just, you're just the yeah broker. i'm just the the, the man dealer. who invests and yeah. makes the things move so idea. i'm looking for a house you know <laughs> there um, we go i got you slope area i don't want that's to pay fine. any money um uh, <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. See? <laughs> Zero down payment. Yeah, looking for a zero down payment. Like everything uh, on social media, like how to yeah. buy a house with no money down. Like Dude. that's yeah. The the house buying <laughs> experience um, for us in the last year was not favorable to <sighs> apparently what my income is for a, looking for a reasonable <laughs> family a home. Yeah. Business yeah. for owning a family home. Yeah, like it was. I didn't realize that I needed to have half a million dollars in order to own a house yes. in Phoenix. Like it's crazy. It's crazy how fast the real better, estate market. Right? I mean, the interest rates are going down, but the prices are still. Dude, yeah, I, I mean, it's, yeah. we're talking we're talking nine hundred square foot two bedroom house for yeah. eight hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars, and it's like, for what? And remember before COVID too, like Arizona used to be like I, I mean, wish, you could buy properties for cheap. I yeah. wish I had my shit together during COVID. That's what I wish. I got so lucky because yeah, of good. that reason. Like good. with the interest rates and before COVID, man, these properties I bought it was just. And now I'm like. Man, yeah. I, now it's crazy. And I say this to everybody, too, because this is, I don't know if they just don't want to teach you. I made more money. They don't want to teach they you. Don't, yeah. They don't. That's, I, that's the real. I made more money buying a house and not doing anything with it that appreciating in one year than I did in the NFL that same year. I I was wow. tripping out. I was like, okay, this this there, there's something they're not teaching and me. I didn't get- I didn't have to get hurt. I didn't, I didn't have, to, have to, to do purpose. nothing. I could have sat <laughs> I there. I could have sat in the house the whole year and made more money. I was wow. like, yeah, this is ridiculous. I'm, I, I needed to start doing real estate more. Wow. The craziest thing I've ever had happen. That, and I was like, that wow. That needs to be a real. 100%. I'm a content creator. Okay, that's there, a real bam. right there. Yeah. Do you get content creator? <laughs> I do. I do. I really do. <laughs> You're like, I'm just expanding in all the yeah. areas, man. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. And that's the game of real estate. Is... It really is. And it's something that, like I said, I wish they taught this in school because yeah. trying to learn this as a grown adult yes. with the mortgage. And I mean, Devon and Luke, they're best friends. And yeah. so he'll get on the phone with Luke for like an hour talking about it. I'm like, what did he say? He said, basically, we got to sell our home. We got to go do this. We got to put this money down towards it. I'm like, just yes. do it. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just sit here. <laughs> the that's what I'm telling you. There's so much. Yeah. And, and not even, and the crazy thing, I wish they would teach more of this because yeah. if you buy a property, being able to like dep- write it off against your income, like, there's yeah. so many benefits to owning homes that they just Truly. don't tell what us. What did you study in school at UCLA? Sociology. Sociology. Okay. Uh, just like, <laughs> yeah, just, I, honestly, I went, to, I went to UCLA to be a doctor, an anesthesiologist, random enough. And it, man, okay. Wait, how did this, they not know I know. That? This is the craziest thing. This is when I stopped. And I knew I wasn't going to be I able to do more. No, no. This, I don't even, I literally, I went to UCLA because I said I want to be a doctor. I want to be an anesthesiologist. And the reason I wanted to be an anesthesiologist was because of epilepsy in Paris. Oh. Because I wanted to, it was more of that yeah. whole. And so when I started taking classes and doing football, I, UCLA is like, I mean, you're you're competing against the best of the best there in, in the school. But I remember after the first test, 
everything is graded on a curve. So like, even if you, if, if the whole class gets 90 and you come in at 85, you're going to get a fail, even though you pass technically, because you're on the curve. Oh, hell no. There were people, I'm not lying. There were people, there was at least 10 people crying, turning in that test. Oh. And you could tell that's, this school was all they had. When I saw that, I was like, this, this isn't, I'm not going to do this. Like, I'm not going to compete with these when I still got to go to practice. I, yeah. the field, I, I yeah. was like, let me just go. And so I'm, I'm actually happy because a lot of people don't even use what they went to school for. Mm -hmm. I'm actually really happy. I got into sociology, this is the studying of people's society and True. stuff like, and because True. it allows me a multitude of aspects to hitch instead of saying, okay, I want to be a doctor, but now I'm doing real estate. Yeah. I would rather just say, you know, I got my sociology degree. It actually taught me just a general knowledge of things that I really appreciate that I can use in all aspects. So well, traveling the world, too. I mean, there we go. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like right out of the way. There yeah. we go. So stuff like that. I'm actually happy I went down that path. But yeah, it, it, being a doctor wasn't wasn't going to cut wow, it. Yeah. I never that's, knew that. That's so like I'm, what? One semester? It was one semester in doctor. Okay. Yeah. I, once I got there, I was like, this ain't it. I'm going to be a whole doctor and, and a whole football player. Committed to UCLA <laughs> because of it. I was like, it's the top of the line school. Wow. Didn't even. So next time someone asks you, hey, what's a fun fact about you that no one knows? That's the answer. That's that the answer. Is, yeah, that's okay. the answer. That's what I went to school answer. for. Yeah. 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 But I did not. Yeah. Didn't know this whole time. <laughs> done yet. I've never told that story. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Stay free podcast. <laughs> wow. So now I'm like, look at We're just going in all these places. So know. sociologist, is that kind of what spurred this hunger to travel? Did you travel lot growing up and you're like so um, I want to continue or did you not at all and you're like let me see the world <laughs> so I, I I how I like to explain it is my parents gave me a passion each my mom's a flight attendant and oh, so that's nice. where I get my travel bugs. So still I, get some I, the benefits yeah no I ended okay. when I was 23 oh, I, like I used to fly free but I stand used by. to yeah, stay, and I well, I used to be on that standby pass all the time. Well, but that that was so my mom was a flight attendant, and that's where I got my travel bug from. My dad cooked all the time. That's where I got my cooking from. And then the photography passion sort of was just my own. And uh, I I forgot I got one of um, my dad's business partners gave me a camera in college, and um, from there I just started playing with it, and then documenting sort of life and stuff, and then. Once I got some money, I was able to like leave the country like, and start. Yeah, yeah, I was like, then I could start taking photos. So that's where all the tra traveling, passions, cooking all come from. Okay, so listen, I have all these ideas. You can be a traveling food blogger and monetize your social media as you go you know, into all these. Social media is like a real it's job. Like a job, yeah. And that's the one aspect of my life that like. I ain't got time for it, man, because <laughs> it is a job. That's yeah. why I was just talking to Devin Kennard, and I was like, bro, how do you put put out all this content? Okay. And I'm like, that's a job. He's like, he does it himself, but he works with mm -hmm. Jamar's, um, Jamar Taylor's wife, and mm -hmm. she helps him con edit. But I'm the like, I, yeah, but I, man, I, I just tried to hire somebody to fix all. 2024, that's my goal, is to have my social media booming. Yes. But it's, it's I just I just had to outsource and hire somebody. That's fine. Yeah. Because guess what? You can figure out the algorithm, which changes all the time. So yeah. you're not stressing over it. You just do what you love, which is, I mean, you could create some amazing content yeah. from all your travels. Just life that yeah. you live, you know, yeah. like one minute you're on, you know, TV, the next you're over here, <laughs> yeah. traveling the world, but you could monetize and that's an extra stream of income for you. That's what in. I, that's what mm -hmm. I, I literally have Am thought I about it. Yet? No, I'm, I'm telling you, I've, I've thought about it, I've, but I'm like, man, how do I figure it? Yeah, We're going to talk after it. Oh, yes. It's like, it's sitting there waiting for you. Just, yeah, that's just, what I got to do. money right here. Do you see it? Pick it up. <laughs> oh man, I wish. Yeah, it's a job, a it job is. I don't have time for right oh. now. Okay, so tell me about your next adventures coming up because you're all over the map. Traveling the world. Traveling the world. Uh, What's this, next? This is my dream that I've been working for, me and my lady, who's actually from Chandler High School. No way. L That's awesome. Born and raised together, went to Chandler High School, oh, same time as me. No way. Both Chandler High products. High Khadija product. Harris. You're in Did here. you guys date in high school? No, we kissed in high school. Ooh. But never dated. Crossed that yeah, line. just had a nice little smooch, but never <laughs> we'll dated. See. Yeah, and um, now, yeah, full time. And so our plan has always been to travel abroad and live. And um, that, you know, we, for two years, we've been saving and just making sure all our stuff is, uh, is aligned and even trying to make sure the things I'm doing with business and all that stuff I can still do while traveling a little yeah. bit. Um, and so here, you know, hopefully by June of this year, 
if we're going to do a podcast, it'll be on Zoom and I'll be, you know, in the background <laughs> of uh, Barcelona yeah. somewhere. So we're going to start at Barcelona and uh, and then from there probably try to hit Tokyo. But we want to like slow travel, we're not going to be the fast travel, but like go maybe a month or two at a place and just enjoy the culture, really embrace it and then go to the next spot and figure it out. So that has been my dream for y- forever. And I said, if I'm ever, and this is the one thing I've always said, I never want to look back because life gets going and sometimes mm-hmm. traveling is like, can I do it? Mm-hmm. Um, but I said, I, the one thing I always would never be able to live with if I never just took the opportunity to do it. We ain't got no kids yet. That's what I'm saying. We ain't got nothing. We, we got a dog and that's it. And the dog ain't coming with us. Oh, so, oh, gots to go. Wait, <laughs> <I'm> just <gasps> <laughs> I just shut up. <laughs> like, what do you mean, Katsuya? Go. Looking for a new home? No, nah, nah, we're going to give it to our friend. He's going to sit there. And then we're going to try to bring it out. But, like, my question, okay, let's talk about we, it. We're, bring, we're just going The emotional her, attachment to that dog is I know. not God. here. And let me, let me yeah. paraphrase this. It was her dog to begin with. So I'm speaking. <laughs> You're like, the adopted father. Yeah, I'm the it's stepdad, like, like, dog dog dad. You're treating him like a stepdad yeah, right so there. So I'm like, he got to go. We out. But <laughs> Okay, okay, good. hang on. I need the vision here. Yeah. So you're leaving abroad for how, is there like how long or are you just kind of going to go? So with the flow? slow season is from in slow season. I say in like the short term rentals and okay. even just uh, broadcasting where we're not really yeah. doing a lot um, or as much um, is when there's no football. So probably hopefully by May or June leave and then maybe be for two or three months and then, we're just going to figure it out. Okay. So if it works, we're going to continue to stay abroad. And then we've already looked at flights. Look at a direct flight from Barcelona to New York for broadcasting eight hours. I could do it. Yeah, that's not bad. The only problem is coming back out here because that's the flight that will get us. Yeah. But when we do it, we might just come out for a week or two and then go back. But like we're our plan is just to leave and then figure it out. And yeah. if it works, it works. But we're just we're going to do it. I love and it. then we're gonna figure it out. That's so we don't have no plan really. We're just gonna go and wow. wing yeah, it. Do it now. You yeah. trying to buy property out there? Yes. Anywhere? Yeah. Yes. I, I do want to. I think I want to say it's the golden visa, but if I can get a visa from you know Spain buying a property, that's what I want to do too. Mm. I have an Airbnb business out there yeah, too. The management, you know. It. It then I can write like off 10 all my trucks. Later, I'm like, where Brent now? Like he's living somewhere. Gone. You never and know. it's cheaper out there. Let me just say that. Oh my gosh, oh. it's slower pace. Is yeah. that's that's what I'm looking forward to. I told the you to promise me. Yeah. The, 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 the looking to adopt the anybody? Yeah. <sighs> 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 we're God, if we're, if we're not bringing a dog, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like a whole family. Yeah. I understand. I might be like five years older than you, but you can still adopt us. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. We are. It's me and her, and we are gone. That's that dog has come maybe later, but no, we out. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So that is that is the plan, the big uh, ambitious plan. And we're just, at this point, it's almost like a backpacking trip. We're going to figure it out. We don't have, other than where we're going to stay for the one month, outside of that, we ain't got nothing else planned. Okay, I told you. Promise me I that you'll go to Alicante. Alicante. And it's in the state of Valencia. It's like a beach town, a very small See, I love that. It's beautiful. Look it up. I love that. After Alicante. we're done, you have to go there. It okay. is by, it's a gem. Like, not a lot of people know about it. Um, I promise you when I'm there, you're going to get a picture of me I'm on the cry. beach. And I'm going to be like My this. heart is in Alicante. <laughs> oh, so I my. studied abroad there, and oh, I no literally way. had a moment of, am I going back home? No way. Right? I was just like, w- like I'm not going to go back home. And I got a call from Fox Sports Arizona on the train. Damn. And they're like, we'd like to hire you. And that was a moment of like, I'm either going to go pursue what my dream is. Yeah broadcast journalism or i'm gonna just live this life that i think i can live on the beach in Alicante. It's yes. but it's like you only have those moments because guess what broadcast yes. carriage kids and now my husband's like let's go move to you know mexico or somewhere and i'm like he's like we got to go to broad we have to get abroad See? i'm like homie yeah. first of all <laughs> that ain't gonna work with the three kids yes like, do you see okay follow the bucket list family yes oh yeah Instagram. for sure yeah, he thinks we can up and do that. I'm you, like, you my can. social media better be monetizing tenfold yeah. by the time we do anything like that. Now there's there are uh, there are some people who get around and they got three kids, but I, it's I, a different it's it. a different beast. They yeah, do it, but I'm just I love traveling. Yeah. I'm like I we travel at least once a month and by doing something, you know, yeah. just to get out because I love culture, I love experiencing. Obviously not Europe once yeah. a month, but like 
travel. Something. And I'm like, there's no way that, you know, I can leave what our home is here in a yeah. sense. I mean, there's a way. Yes, that's, yeah. You can always figure it out, but I'm like, I'm so rooted here with yeah. family and school and, like, my just day-to-day life that I'm like, I, let, let's just go experience See? things and then come home. Yeah. Like, I like to have a home. That's what we're like. Let's just jump You're, and then we'll You got all the back. guts. I give yeah. it to you. I cannot wait to see your adventures. Yes. I mean, you've always wanted, like, a travel show. show always. So. Is it Anthony Bourdain? I, oh, for sure. Okay. That's what I said. Once I get the hiring process down of whoever we're going to talk, but then once I Hire. get that, I'm telling you, <laughs> then that's all That's all I need. And then I can just oh produce that. Gosh. I'm for sure going to document it all. I got my camera ready. Okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm excited. We'll be following along. Please. And all the photography. And look at we barely even talked football. I, I know. That's good. That's see? just kind of <laughs> that's how good. it goes. We did a lot of that back in the Cardinals yes. days. So now this is, you know. Dig a little deeper. Life after. Life after. So happy for you. And thank, thank you. you for spending your time with us. It was a quick it podcast, fast. truly. Yeah, it so went fast. we'll have to have you come back soon. Round two. Chandler guy. Thank come you on. so much. Thank you. All right, everyone. We'll see you next time.